Hey guys, it's Moogle over here, and I'm back again with another video. And today I want to talk about Soul Calibur 6. Now, I know you guys, if you guys ain't familiar with the Soul Calibur series, I must say that Soul Calibur is one of my favorite weapon-based fighting games ever made. And I remember back in the day when Soul Edge was first, or Soul Blade, either one of you played the arcade or the PS1 version, that was a game, a fighting game that I've never seen before, like, at that time. It was just, to me... It, it, it felt like it was before its time like the visuals was great the uh, especially with the opening cinematic called shine I thought that was pretty awesome and everything but uh, throughout the year soul Calibur had pretty much a bumpy bumpy ride um, all the way through um, once the Dreamcast it came out soul Calibur was no longer on a PlayStation console went straight to the Dreamcast and I think uh, soul Calibur one was pretty amazing on the Sega Dreamcast and then it followed up with a um, with a multi um, plat release um, the following generation with the Xbox, uh, the GameCube, and the PS, uh, the PS2 with Soul Calibur 2, and of course, you know I had to get the P the GameCube version because it had Link as an exclusive character, and this is where uh, I guess you could say uh, Soul Calibur started going down the route of having exclusive characters, um, depending on the console that you get, or just guest characters from third parties in general. And I thought Soul Calibur 2 was was a pretty, uh, I guess you could say. It was a pretty rich game. It was, it was very, very. Um, it was it, it was a big improvement from the first uh, Soul Calibur game, and I still enjoy that to this day. I love the gameplay mechanics uh, to Soul Calibur 2, and then um, they followed up with Soul Calibur 3. Soul Calibur 3, to me, in my opinion, um, a lot of competitive players that I've talked with and a lot of people that I know who, who love the Soul Calibur franchise, a lot of them didn't like Soul Calibur uh, 3. They said it was very. It wasn't competitive. Um, it had a lot of bugs had a lot of glitches in the game and stuff and overall um, despite the newer things that they added to it especially at the um, my favorite feature was the uh, the character creation character creation to me by far was one of the favorite most my most favorite feature um, added to um, Soul Calibur and in fact if you guys don't know Soul Calibur 3 was the game that really got me into playing um, fighting games a bit more seriously and the only reason why I started really digging and investing my time with Soul Calibur 3 was the fact that you was able to create your own character. Now, if you guys watch my YouTube channel and everything, I, you know I love Moog and I love to create things. And when it, no matter what, if it's a game, no matter what creation tool that you hand me, I will sit down for hours and like to create things. And I think that's what really brought me into fighting games more was the creation tool that was added to Soul Calibur. So I was able to make my RPG characters from from Guardian Sages that I made when I was a lot younger during my RPG Maker days. So I was able to put them into Soul Calibur and I think it, it made my experience much more, I guess you say, fun. Um, and it really got me into fighting games. And then, of course, Soul Calibur 4, which to me, I really didn't enjoy as much. I don't know why they added, uh, what is it, Star Wars characters as a guest. As guest. It just didn't make sense to me. You had, uh, you had Darth Vader, you had Star Killer, and you had Yoda. To me, I think they were the stupidest additions to a Soul Calibur game. It just didn't feel right. It just didn't fit in that Soul Calibur universe. And so, with Soul Calibur 4, I kind of checked out of Soul Calibur altogether. I didn't even bother with 5. A lot of people didn't like 5 too much. So, we didn't hear from Soul Calibur in years, and everybody thought that the franchise would never come back and that the franchise was dead um, altogether. And then suddenly we get a trailer, we get an announcement of Soul Calibur um, 6, and it really had everybody like really, really surprised, really, really hyped and excited for it. And then of course it introduced uh, another guest character, which is Geralt from uh, Witcher 3, which I think he fits perfectly. That's a, a cameo, that's a special character, a third party guest character that fits perfectly in Soul Calibur. It makes sense. It, it definitely fits. And it seemed like that Namco Bandai or Bandai Namco um, they figured that, hey, they noticed that they, they pretty much, as far as story is concerned, had written themselves into a corner because as the franchise had pretty much grown, um, the characters had gotten, old, had gotten older or certain characters were, were either dead or they just died off from the story. So they had to they start removing characters and replacing them with um, younger characters that fought the similar play style as the original, which ticked off a lot of fans, especially fans who are veterans of the original characters, didn't have the opportunity, um, missed the opportunity to go back and play as their favorite character, and now they're being replaced by a more, a much younger and newer, I guess you could say, much generic versions um, of the original characters. So, I, I guess you can tell that the developers this time, what they wanted to do with this game was, they needed a way to bring back 
the original cast members or pull some of the best characters from each entry and put into one game by creating a storyline that makes an excuse for it so to go on i know i'm taking long to get to my impression of soul caliber 6 but now i'm going to definitely get into it because it leads right into this um soul caliber 6 for the ps4 that i got um it seemed like the developers decided that hey let's do let's do a story mode much different let's let's make the story focus around time and like different timelines or different time periods of uh when the soul caliber um series that pretty much or soul edge or whatever um first started and it allowed them to pretty much uh use that as a vehicle to bring back characters from past entries and bring back people's favorite characters now to me i think the the other issue with this is is now that they get able to bring back characters again is now we have to think about how they're going to handle DL dlc now as far as this game is concerned i really enjoy soul caliber 6 it feel like it feel like a it felt like familiar grounds that nostalgic moment came back it felt it felt familiar but it felt somewhat fresh at the same time and i'm really i really enjoyed it but when it comes as far as characters concerned um there's not really much characters to select from i mean they have some of the fan favorite characters but there's still more characters out there um that fans wish they had pretty much put into the the base roster so the roster is kind of small so i can see where some fans may be a little bit turned off by it especially the fact is that they had namco bandai or bandai namco had pretty much had day one dlc um or pre-order dlc which allowed you to use to have terra um if you reserve the game or whatever you get terra as a free uh download and everything and i think that that really sucks for the fact is that you know day one uh, i gotta I got do a whole video on that if you're able to have day one dlc and get a character day one the day that you purchase the game why not just put the character in the game so i think that turned some people off or it, it built somewhat some controversy so i haven't really bothered to do the day one dlc so i don't even have tara in my roster at all and the thing is i use tara um and and so caliber and she was like she was like my third second or third character i would use in so caliber but i'm not gonna even bother until later on and see what other dlc characters that we may be getting in, in the future um for this game but overall i like what they've done now some people story mode is not really important to fighting games or anything like that but to me um i think the story mode is despite them going about it with uh, i guess you could say uh pictures and, and text boxes and stuff like that um i think it's i think it's pretty interesting i think when it comes to soul caliber and most fighting games story modes or storylines of fighting games can be the most convoluted story mess you know when it comes to um fighting games because there's multiple different characters and most most character endings contradicts other character endings and then you can't tell which ending is canon and which ending is more like just like specific for that character like more like a a what if or whatever like that so there's not one streamlined storyline and it seemed like with Mortal Kombat and Neverrealm Studios, when they started doing their story modes, it seemed like other companies been following suit with how they want to have one like one arc and they have all the characters be affected by that arc, so it makes much more sense with each of the characters' um, plots and everything. But with the story mode, I think it's pretty cool because I didn't really know much about Soul Caliber. I remember about I remember Soul Blade, and you know everybody wanted you know the, the Soul the Soul Blade and to to, uh, to I guess you could say. To get whatever they desire and everything and i remember Siegfried, and i because Siegfried was my main and so in soul blade on the ps1 and it, i remember that day where when i ended it with Siegfried, and he picked up the we picked up the um soul blade and the soul blade clamped onto his hand and then it turned him into nightmare i thought that was like pretty emotional especially the way the way the cinematic was of that time and i like how in the story mode they really pretty they pretty much re-showed that they retold it and showed you into t today's generation with the visuals and everything which i thought was pretty cool and i had no idea that killick was the main character of the original soul caliber and it followed and more so followed around him so now that i'm getting into the story mode and it's following the storyline in chronological order you you're playing as killick as the main character for i guess you could say soul caliber one and in, in, in uh and two or, or whatever so i think that's pretty cool now as far as character creation is concerned i haven't really uh dived into the character creation much i mean when i first played the game i got onto the game and um the first thing i did go to was the character creation i wanted to, i wanted to create my i want to create mel chesdek one of my one of my rpg characters i wanted to get right into it and of course um with this character creation it's still lacking um 
the the individuals you remember in Soul Calibur 3 they had uh, uh, spirits um, that was that was separate from the the main cast because when you create a character you're able to select what fighting style you can pretty much create a character over top of Siegfried or or the, the, the existing roster but in Soul Calibur 3 you had custom souls where there were characters who had different play styles that was different from the cast and it seemed like I don't know why they removed that from the future entries of Soul Calibur. It seems like in Soul Calibur 6, they didn't bother to bring it back. So you're pretty much creating a character over top of an existing character, which is, is no problem. And it's amazing that the game haven't been out this long and everybody's already creating so many characters from different franchises and different animes and stuff. And I think it's pretty funny. You definitely need to go online and look at some, some of the things that they created with these characters and stuff. Now, coming out the door, um, when cre creating a character, if you just want to create a character right away, you won't have that many options available to you as far as um, armor pieces and stuff like that, I believe. Because the thing is, I haven't really checked to see if you can unlock, do playing certain modes and stuff like that. Because I just dived in, created a character, and I went straight online. And before I dive into the line, but online aspect of it, um, I got into the game, uh, I started creating my character, and I just, I knew exactly what I want my character to look like, just from the, from the door. Um, they do have different, more voice options, uh, more more hair options and stuff, and hopefully you can be able to unlock more um, later down the line. And I know from what I can tell that they will, there will be a DLC um, in the future that will give you more outfits and stuff for you to the farther customize your character and everything. But yeah, I dived right in it, created my Mel Chesnick character, and I went on the, um, I went on online. No, before I went online, I went, on, I went to training mode just to just to get a fam just to get familiar with the controls and see if anything had changed and, and stuff like that. And I've I've noticed that in when I got into the training mode that the training mode um I got, I put I started it and I realized that hey like I feel at home like not much has changed with the gameplay and I, I, that's what I really liked about it. It felt it felt familiar, but it somewhat felt new in certain aspects. Now the thing that I do have to get used to now that they added the soul charge, and I believe uh, once you get one meter or, or whatever, you hold back and you press and you hold R two, and you can go into your soul charge. And um, with the soul charge, it gives your characters a special stat boost and it gives them different properties. And not just that, um, you're also given a list of of additional moves. Um, to the character because I know it's certain certain moves were locked away from Siegfried when he's not in soul charge And then once you put him into soul charge then he has access to other things and stuff or different properties Just added to your um, to the to your character because it's this one move when you hold triangle and circle and he switches his stance to the sword that he puts to the ground um, when you press the circle button, he pushes the sword. He, like he, he lunges the sword at you, and it, it, it gives you a full knockdown. Now, remember back in the day when you had that move, you can either push the person with the sword, or you can actually literally run with the sword, and and it pushes them towards the to the edge or to the wall or whatever. Now, I noticed that was removed, but then I later discovered that once I go into Soul Charge and then re um, get back um reuse that stance again and then press circle that's when he's able to run and charge with the sword so i'm noticing that certain things or the moves the moves properties changes depending if you're in soul charge or not so that's something that's a layer a different layer that i have to get used to which i think it adds more depth to it because it really makes you think because not only that soul charge uses a meter you also have soup you also have your supers in the game which just by holding r2 you use your super which also uses the meter so you can sometimes you have to decide whether or not hey should i go full should i, should I go soul charge or should i actually use a super in this situation to get my opponent and that was the thing i went online and i started playing and luckily um i live streamed me me with my experience of playing in the game and everything and luckily i don't know how or or whatever i did pretty i did fairly well i know it's still the beginning and people start getting used to it and stuff but i did notice and i keep forgetting that this game has supers i remember i stopped playing so caliber around so caliber 4 so i'm still trying to get used to that fact and it was times where i was ho i was actually holding pressure on my opponent and then they wake up with super and i'm like oh my god i forgot that you can use a super and then i started remembering that and started reminding me that i can use supers as well um the online is pretty good i haven't really experienced any lag in it um, but yes, of course, you're gonna have some online warriors who who find some particular mechanics and they spam certain mechanics. I can't remember the name of the mechanic offhand, but it allows your character to go into a cinematic cutscene where you have to guess which button to pick, like paper, rock, scissors, square beats circle, circle beats triangle, I believe, and then triangle beats square. 
yeah yeah and that's how that um that's how that mechanic go and there's this one person i played online that just kept exploiting that so it kept countering me and then i forgot that there's a move that negates that as well and once i started figuring out how the mechanics work i started really really um getting into the groove of things online i really really enjoy it um that's pretty much uh my impressions so far of the game i'm enjoying it would i do a review not sure my impression should give you a good idea with with respect from the game and how much i really love the game and i'm still playing it right now and i'm really enjoying myself and it, it really brings brings things home to me it's very familiar it's familiar ground i'm really enjoying it so cobra is a fighting game that i can i can play for hours unlike street fighter after a while certain fighting games i really do get bored with but so color was a game i could never really get bored with that fast and i'm really enjoying it and i'm hoping to stream it some more and hopefully get a chance to play you guys um online and everything i think that'd be pretty fun so that's pretty much my impression in the game i'm really enjoying it and if you guys were skeptical or hesitant and rather not to pick it up i think you should give it a buy i really think if you love soul caliber and you really enjoy this game um you i think you would really like this now if you're looking for a single player experience the single player player experience is there but if you're not really into dialogue chatting and, and you know watching the story unfold and you get into little battles here and there then I think that will turn you off just a little bit. But if you're just a fiend and just want to get online and start bodying people or getting bodied by by players and just want to want to you know get salty and rage, then I think this would be the game for you. I think you would really enjoy it. It's very very familiar, so you'll definitely jump right into it and feel right at home. So that's about it for my impressions. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you like to hear other impressions from me, I'll definitely love to do that too. Um, that wraps everything up. This is Mugen Lore, and don't forget to hit that bell button to be notified for when I upload new videos. And please do not forget to subscribe and like this video. If you don't like it, you don't have to like it either. But it still helps to help me and my channel. It lets YouTube know and the algorithm know that you guys are being involved and being interactive um, with my YouTube channel. This is Moving Lord signing off. See you game fiends later. Peace out.